So we're here today to talk about musical technology. And I guess when most people think about musical technology, they think about computers, recording studios, or live sound stages with racks and racks of equipment. But it really started well before that. Yes, that's right. Really, the history of music technology goes right back to the early history of human beings on this planet. As soon as an early human took two rocks and hit them together, or two sticks and knocked them together, you've already got music technology. Taking tools external to the human body and making sounds for musical purposes, to beat out a rhythm or whatever. And over the history of uh, music technology, we can see how music technology itself has kept pace with other developments in technology. For example, thousands of years ago in ancient China, the technology of casting in bronze reached an incredible level of sophistication. And at the same time, they made the most amazing bronze bells as well. If we go back, for example, to 17th century Italy in the great age of craftsmanship, we can see there how the craft of making violins reached a level of perfection that's never been surpassed. In the industrial age in the 19th century, the modern piano was created. That was made possible by industrial production. And in the 20th century, electronics and then ultimately digital technology has transformed music technology again. And just on that last period in the earlier part of the 20th century, with the ability to record sound had a profound impact and the, also the ability to play it back. Sure. Sound recording is the fulfilment of a human dream that goes back a long time. In the early 17th century, Francis Bacon described sound recording in his book, New Atlantis. It was only in the late 19th century that the technology was actually developed to make sound recordings. But I think at that stage, the inventors of sound recording really thought of it basically as something to capture an ephemeral phenomenon, which is sound, and keep it. They didn't imagine that it was going to become a means of distributing music on a vast scale as it is today. So we had music at one point where if you wanted to hear it, you basically had to be in the same room as those musicians to a point today where you can have every song ever recorded available at your fingertips. Yes, more music than anybody has time to listen to in a lifetime, really. So human behaviour in terms of listening to music has completely changed. In little more than 100 years, we now have a situation where most people listen to music most of the time through recorded media. And I guess the <clears throat> interesting extension of that now, if we look at the latter part of the 20th century, would be the computer, which has essentially taken all the technology available in a recording studio and made it available to everyone at a cost that was unheard of two decades before. Yes, that's right. It's democratised technology in that sense, made it possible for people to be able to use these very sophisticated uh, tools on their desktop. But I'd like to emphasize though that in order to make music using this technology, you have to have ideas. And I really believe that you could still make really interesting music just by hitting two rocks together. Uh, it, the importance is the, is the idea uh, and what you do with it. The tools are a means to develop that idea, but you still need imagination, creativity, to make something which is interesting. And that's what we're going to be going through in this course, is looking at the link between music technology and creative ideas and the realisation of musical works. That's exactly right. The focus of this course is on using the technology to make music that is interesting and creative.